killing all of them haircuts. Back to back, 30 minutes, appointment time, you see me standing. Top off, you see me winning. Everything better with a KP twin. Cutting up, gang. Today we're going to be talking about the fascinating history of barbering. Barbering has been around for thousands of years, dating back to ancient times. Imagine people having to get a haircut and grooming for as long as we can remember. Now, one of the cool things about barbering is how it's changed over the time because of the new inventions and tools. Back in the day, barbers used metal shears to cut hair, and later on, they got clippers and even started using electricity to power the tools. These advancements made the job easier and more efficient for barbers. But here's where it gets really interesting. While technology has definitely played a big role in shaping the barber's profession, what's even more important is how barbers fit into society. You see, throughout history, the status of barbers have been influenced by things like cultural traditions, trends in fashion and grooming, and even political factors. For example, in some societies, barbers were even seen as really important and respected members because they were skilled at grooming and styling. But in other places, their role might not have been as highly regarded. And when a cultural trends or political changes happen, it could affect how much people value the service of barbers. So while technology has changed the tools barbers use, it's these bigger social and cultural factors that have been the most significant impact on the role of barbers in the human civilization over the ages. Now let's explore how people in ancient times took care of their hair. Imagine going back thousands of years, way before you had fancy tools like we do today. Archaeologists, who are like detectives of the past, have found evidence that even during the time of the big glaciers, the ice ages, people were already cutting and styling their hair. But get this cutting up, gang. They didn't have scissors or clippers we have now. Instead, they used really basic things like sharp rocks, shells, or bones to trim their hair. Can you imagine trying to cut your hair with a rock? Now here's where it gets even more interesting. People back then didn't just stop at cutting their hair. They got creative with it. They used things like animal sew-ins, which is like a strong thread from animal parts, or strips of animal hide to decorate their hair or hold it back. They even knew how to braid their hair in different ways. So even with all that fancy tools we have today, they still found ways to make their hair look cool. So when you think about it, cutting no gang, People have been taking care of their hair and styling it in different ways for a really, really long time. It just goes to show how creative and resourceful humans can be even way back in ancient times. In many ancient cultures, people believed that the body, mind, and spirit were all connected. This means they thought that what happened to one part of the body could affect the others and even impact their spiritual well-being. Pretty interesting, right, cutting up gang? Eh? Now, this belief led to some fascinating superstitions and practices that blended together spirituality, religion, and even medicine. For example, imagine if you thought that good and bad spirits could enter your body through your hair. Sounds spooky, doesn't it? But for some tribes, this was a real belief. They thought that cutting their hair was a way to get rid of bad spirits and keep the good ones in. It's like a spiritual haircut. In another interesting ceremony, people believed that evil spirits could leave the body through the hair. So they let their hair hang long, loose during a ritual dance, sort of like giving spirits an exit route. And afterwards, the barber would tightly comb their hair back and tie it up to keep the good spirits in and the bad ones out. It's like a spiritual hairdo. Now, because of these beliefs, Tribal barbers became really important figures in their communities. They weren't just cutting hair. They were like medicine men, shamans, or priests because they were even seen having special powers to protect people from evil spirits and keep them healthy. So you can see how deeply connected hair, spirituality, and culture were in these ancient societies. The ancient Egyptians were like trendsetters of beauty and grooming. Imagine living in a time when people really went all out to look their best. The Egyptians were really ahead of their time when it comes to beauty. We know this because archaeologists have found lots of cool stuff in the tombs of Egyptians, rulers, and nobles. 
Can you imagine finding things like combs, brushes, mirrors, and even cosmetics in a tomb? It's like stepping back in time into an ancient beauty parlor. Now what's really cool is the materials they use. Instead of the fancy tools we have today, like plastic and metals, the Egyptians made their grooming tools out of copper and bronze. And get this, they even had scissors and razors made out of these metals. Can you imagine using a razor made out of copper or bronze? But it's not just the tools that were impressive. Egyptians also used natural materials to make their own cosmetics. They used things like berries, bark, minerals, and even henna to add color to the hair and skin and nails. And the most popular of all cosmetics were eye paint. They used a plant called henna to color their hair and nails. And the first record of this was way back in 1500 BC. So you see, the ancient Egyptians were like the original beauty experts. They showed us that taking care of yourselves and looking good isn't just a modern thing. It's been important to people for thousands of years. Now, hear me out, cutting up gang. Can you imagine being a barber to the pharaohs and priests of the ancient Egypt? It must have been a quite honor. Now, we all know about this because of the written records, art, and sculptures that have been preserved from the ancient Egypt. They give us glimpse into the daily lives and rituals of the people who live there. One interesting thing we've learned is that high ranking men and women in ancient Egypt used barbers for a couple of important reasons. First, they would shave their heads to make wearing wigs more comfortable. You see, wigs were really popular back then, especially among the nobility. And having a shaved head underneath would help the wig fit better. Plus, it helped prevent things like lice and other parasites from making a home in their hair. Can you imagine having to deal with that? But here's where it gets even more fascinating. Priests in ancient Egypt had a really important job and they needed to be pure before they entered the temple. So every third day, barbers would shave their priests entire bodies to make sure they were clean and pure. That's a big responsibility, isn't it? One barber in particular named Miramat was especially respected for his work. His image was actually sculpted in stone which was a big deal back then. It's like being famous for being a great barber. So you see, barbers weren't just cutting hair in ancient Egypt. They were playing a crucial role in keeping people clean, comfortable, and spiritually pure. They were like the unseen heroes of ancient Egypt society. Now cutting up gang, let's talk about how the hair was groomed in incredible styles in certain African cultures. Imagine living in a place where hair wasn't just something you kept clean, it was a form of art. In some African cultures, people took grooming their hair to a whole new level. They used to use really cool tools called MBs, which were intricately carved wooden combs. Can you imagine combing your hair with a beautifully carved comb? But it's just not about the tools. It's also about how they decorate their hair. People in these cultures would use beads, clay, and other colorful bands to add flair to their hairstyles. It's like wearing jewelry in your hair. One group called the Psy Warriors had a really unique hairstyle. They would weave the front part of the hair into three tiny sections called its, and the rest of their hair would be tied into a queue down the back. And let's not forget about braiding. Braiding was a big deal in these cultures and people would create intricate patterns with their braids. Sometimes the patterns even show what status someone had within their tribe. So your hairstyle wasn't just about looking good. It was also about showing who you were in the community. So you see, in these African cultures, hair wasn't just hair. It was a way of expressing yourself, your identity, and your place in the world. It's like wearing a culture on your head. Cutting up gang. Now let's see what the Bible can tell us about barbers in the ancient Middle East. Did you know that the Bible gives us some interesting clues about the importance of barbers during that time? In the book of Leviticus, there's a passage where Moses gives instructions to people who have recovered from leprosy. He tells them to shave all their body hair as a part of a ritual cleansing. 
Can you imagine how important it must have been to them to clean and pure after recovering from such a serious illness? And in the book of Ezekiel, there's another mention of shaving where it says, take thou a barber's razor and cause it to pass upon thy head and upon thy beard. This shows us that shaving was a common practice and people will go to barbers to get it done. Based on these and other references in the Bible, scholars believe that barbering was available to everyone in the Middle East during the time of Moses, which was around 1392 to 1272 BC. So even thousands of years ago, people were going to barbers to take care of their grooming needs. It's amazing to see how ancient texts can give us insight into daily lives and practices of people in the past. Barbers have been an important part of society for thousands of years, and their role has always been about helping people look and feel their best. Cold cut, like I cut them outside in the winter. I remember way back, back, back at the beginning. Yeah. Niggas thought I was finished, treating me like a pin. Boy. Now with BVS diamonds flooded all in my Boy. hinder. And I'm still independent, by myself no defender. Yeah, man.